Welcome back to Nightcaps Nostalgia. As always, I am your enlightened host, Poe, and with me, Nathan. So, the two games we're ranking today are going to be Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, the specifically the Xbox One uh, digital version that has the DLC characters in it, not the 360 version, it's worth noting. We had a huge conversation about the three it, different versions of this game. Bro, it lasted like tens of seconds. Uh, oh. And we're also going to be doing the downloadable version of Killer Instinct that launched with the Xbox One. Now, worth noting, this is the marketing, whatever you want to call it, the definitive edition that has all characters, all DLC. It's not the, the free-to-play, like, you only get two characters, and, like, every week or two they might cycle in a new one. We ended up talking about it during the episode uh, that we put out. That, like, weirdly is taking off in a way that our other episodes aren't, but, like, people are watching it and not liking it. Hell because yeah. Our, <laughs> because our audio is garbage, and it has nothing to do with our quality of content. Um... We we can pretend for a little while longer. I think that the content's good. I think we can keep that charade going. I I do wanna I do wanna address something. The audio in those videos are trash because I had to fucking try to pretend like I know what I'm doing to get rid of the fan in the background that no one pointed out was picking up on mic during the live stream. So thanks, guys. Really appreciate that. But uh, I think that says something about you being more self conscious than our audience is conscious. Isn't that kind of funny? Fuck our guess. audience. What have they done for me lately? <laughs> Not subscribe. <to> <laughs> Start making alt accounts. No, no, please don't. No, please don't. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, we know the audio issue over the last four fighting game episodes, and we're gonna address that going forward. But let's talk about the uh the actual content of the fighting games. Uh, let's start with Killer Instinct. We'll do them in order that we uh we, we played, played them. them. Yeah. How'd you feel about it? So. This is a game that I think has a very uh very interesting history. Having said that, we didn't play the, the free-to-play version, we played the definitive version, which is basically just the game in its totality at this point. Yeah, it was on sale a couple weeks back, so I bought it. Yeah. Um, it's it's not my favorite fighting game. Uh, it's not my least favorite fighting game. It's definitely one that I think I would need more time with to really get a good grasp on. I think it has an interesting art style. Wouldn't quite describe it as good. It, it's it's it was literally a launch title for the Xbox One digitally, so like you can see that like it has that border hyper realism that doesn't yeah. quite work, where it's like uncanny valley effect to me. Yeah, it's one of those things. Like at least for me, uh, when you're playing as human characters, you see some weird yeah. early Xbox One jank bullshit. Where like when you're playing as someone like Rash, right? Like. It's more hyper stylized. It, you don't see as many cracks in the yeah. Facade. I, think, I think oddly, like General Rom looked the best out of all the characters that I think that we saw. Yeah, and like the the guy I started with the sword, I think looked the worst. But um, oh, your Nord character, whatever he was. Yeah, I forget his name. Doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, no, I I gotta say, uh, it it does date the game terribly, which is both a good and a bad thing at the same time, right? Sure. Um, as for how it handles, it's one of the faster fighting games, which I don't have a great affinity towards. So, uh, I don't know. I, I really didn't take a lot away from it. That I was like, oh, wow, this is cool and unique to this game. Or like, this is something that I like about this game. It felt very generalized. Um, and I didn't feel like I was really picking up on, uh, anything that really helped me be competitive in it even. Sure. And it's, it's worth noting Killer Instinct as a fighting game series has always been, huge combo strings like yeah. it, it which is what i struggle with the most is combo <laughs> right it, 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 it's meant to be visually like oh my god look at all the bullshit that's happening on screen and there's a lot of bullshit happening on screen with this one did you get the sense that the controls were getting in your way or you just like was it responsive like when you hit a button was it doing something or like was it making sense like were you figuring out combos as the game went on yeah, no, I, I I don't think I really have a problem with the controls other than uh, uh, th that I'm bad at them. <laughs> so uh, so it's more like the, the air quote meta aspect of like knowing what to do and when that was getting in the way. I, I think we've talked about this before, but, you know, uh, learning a fighting game or learning fighting games in general is one thing. Learning a fighting game is a whole different can of worms, right? Yeah, and, and playing four back to back when you've never played any of them and fighting games aren't your thing. Not the best environment to sit and actually, like, learn it. But 
God damn it, we're going to rank them. We're going to fucking give authoritative opinions on 30-minute chunks of a video game. I mean, what we're doing will cascade throughout history as the definitive list of our times, obviously. I yes. Mean, the, the, the day that we finish it will be um, international heroes, I'm sure. But no, having said all that, I, I think I'm ready to rank it, unless you've got anything more to well, add. Well, I, I guess let's... let's... We, we talked about graphics, controls, uh, as far as your end, I think we, we covered. Did you have fun with it? Because I, I, I'm going to take a, a guess here at your list and say that you're going to put this above Fighting Vipers. Okay, that's fair. I'm, I'm making a call. I'm making a guess. Yeah. Um, I, was it an enjoyable time? No, I think overall, I mean, I, I tend to be hypercritical, especially when I'm losing. Uh, but no, I, I think it's fine. I wouldn't. That's that's a game I wouldn't mind picking up again and fucking around with again. Uh, which is it's funny that you knew exactly it's it is going up above uh, Fighting Vipers, and uh, I mean, do you want like I said, do you want to just rank it at this point? <laughs> well, yeah. If you if you want to throw it on your list, go for it. Go ahead and tell me the number. I'll write it down and then update the Google Docs after we're done. Somehow we'll do that. Um, yeah. It's going to come right below Sonic Fighters. Uh, give, give me a number. It's going to be number eight. Number, number eight? eight? Okay. Yes. Well, actually, after the list is done, it'll shift down one position. The, for now, I'm going to mark it for eight, and then we'll we'll adjust as necessary. <laughs> sure. Uh, for me, I'm sitting here looking at my list. I have been super into fighting games for a long, long time. You're getting old, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Probably since Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which next thing we're talking about, I'll go a little more in depth there, but the problem I've always had with fighting games is you need to have that other person who is just as into this game as you are to learn alongside, or you need a community to do it locally. Yeah. The problem is, it's like, you either don't have that local community, or you go online, and if there's even a community there with a game this old they're all going to be way better than you, and you're going to get your fucking ass kicked. So, with Where I Fall with Killer Instinct, I really had fun controlling Rash. Like, of all the characters I played, he really resonated with me the most. I mean, you were whooping ass with him, I remember that. <laughs> right. All that being said, um, with where I'm going to put this game, for me... Shame. Right right now, this is like with just you and me playing, we don't have a regular steady community, and I'm not hopping online to get my ass kicked when I have other things to do with my life than devote to one specific video game. I'm putting it a... I'm putting it below Sonic the Fighters right now. Which is exactly where I put it. <laughs> right, but it, it's going to be my new number seven. So, I have control of the Google Docs here. Are you going to do that right now? I'm actively doing it. Oh. We're shifting, we're shifting. This is like a behind-the-scenes moment. You know, you have to really see or hear. Well, you it's... Describe yourself doing an action. <laughs> yeah, so, uh... We're doing this shit in real time, baby. There's only, it's funny, I'm looking at the screen like they're going to be watching what we're doing. You're not I know, like, I'm, I'm debating cutting this out or not, because pe people are here for the, the quality content. Uh... You should probably cut this. <laughs> I, I probably should, but you know what we're going to do? Oh, God, you're going to get lazy about it. Oh, uh, we're keeping the shit in, man. It, we're, we're here for the quality, not the quantity. So. That's not what you told me last week. <laughs> <laughs> but no, my, my logic putting it below Sonic the Fighters is, is it really was neck and neck. You and I had more fun playing Sonic the Fighters together. Yeah. And we're more on an even playing field. This this could change. If we have another fighting game night with multiple people, if we sit down and learn it, if you learn it, if I learn it, this may adjust. But where I sit right now, Sonic the Fighters was more fun during that stream yeah. than Killer Instinct was for me. I, I would say that, uh, I think you and I would probably agree on this, that Killer Instinct can kind of get thrown into, like, the group, if we ever do, like, some random-ass fighting games. I'm cool with that coming up. Yeah. I might not win any games in it, but that's fine. <laughs> Sure. So, uh, I mean, that, that covers Killer Instinct. Or, for me, it controlled well. It was a six-button fighter on a regular control pad, so it, it loses points there for me, because then I have to keep track of my thumb and two fingers. It's whatever, right? Hands are hard, man. Hands are I, hard, I, man. I would know. I've been struggling with them for 33 years. But, uh, 
Yeah, the graphics are fine. Like, it, it's nothing to write home about. I, I, it, I'm, I'm trying to cover my bases here before we move on, see if there's anything I missed. Uh, for fun factor, it's fun, and I factored that in. So uh, you can see that in my ranking. All right, uh, we're rambling. That means it's time to move on. We're rambling, he says. To Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Okay. But this is where I throw in the curveball that you didn't know was coming. You don't even know how to throw a ball, okay? Much less a curveball. Bro, it, it, it's like curving right around you. It's like, it's like, I'm Angelina Jolie, and this is wanted. Gross. Anyway. <laughs> We're ranking the chess master for the NES. I didn't tell Justin about this at all. You want to you want to throw that in here? Oh, we're throwing the chess master for NES on here. Um, okay. Graphics, they exist. I, I think it had one. Uh, I think I had one, maybe two. It, it had one or two graphics. Yeah, uh, chess master before the NES had a lot more chess features than I thought it would have. It was more fully featured than you would expect. I agree. I uh, I found myself surprised by that. Um, as for anything other than that, though, I mean, like the difficulty on it seemed kind of weird. I, I wouldn't say it was bad, but I mean, my God, we turned it up just a little bit. It took us forever to figure out how to turn up the difficulty, and when we did finally turn it up, it fucking whooped my ass. <laughs> my biggest issue with chess matches graphics are if if you've seen chess and you've seen the NES, it's exactly what you think it looks like. My biggest issue one, I don't know chess. I'm bad at it. I know what the pieces do. I don't know theory behind it. But I had fun during that stream. That was not a stream. What? Oh, yeah, we did do an episode. You're right. Yeah, it was an episode that we did. My bad. <laughs> My favorite part was rotating the board orientation. Oh, dude, that fucked me up so and bad. Exactly, because like you wouldn't think something like that would fuck with you. Oh, I knew it would fuck me immediately. I have a terrible time seeing diagonals in general, and then you're also flipping horse movement. Oh, yeah. fuck that. It, it's also weird. You have to rank this game as a single-player offline experience. Yes. So, the, the feature set, huge. The, the multiple difficulties, the fucking... Gra graphics are bad. But you don't need them to be fantastic. Uh, where? I just wanted to throw a curveball and yeah, threw, have fun you, with it. I didn't think ball. I didn't think this through at all. This was literally an idea I had two minutes before we hit record. I just wanted to see. Uh, we're throwing shit on the wall and seeing where it sticks. So, so where is this shit stain of an NES game sticking on your wall of rankings? This is coming in underneath Dark Watch, all the way near the bottom of my list. Um, okay, throw me... We're, we're, before any changes, it's going to be the new number 16. Okay, so chess is 16. Does that affect your ranking of Killer Instinct at 8? I don't think so. Uh, they, they will affect each other. I'm saying that before either of these go on the board, that's what it will be. Okay, okay. I don't feel like doing the math right now with you. In fact, Dude, you said, I love the math. You said you weren't going to do the math, and you made me do the math anyway. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, it, 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 I'd rather play a chess game on an actual chess board with another person. Agreed. In this game. So... With, with no the, online support, it makes it a little weird to play a chess game. The fact that it has a decent AI, apparently, reportedly, is the only reason why it gets any credit, and that's only because I am too inexperienced to actually yes. tell if it is a good chess AI or not. Like, uh... Because I, I think I even talked about in the episode, one of the problems with chess AI is that... They don't know how to play badly very well, so a lot of times. Yeah, that is a weird thing. Yeah, one of the things that they'll do is that you know they'll they'll know the best you know twenty moves in a position, and then they're like, okay, well, we have to play at a certain ranking, so we'll pick number seven. But number seven can be still pretty good or the fucking worst, like a, a nonsense move, right? So it is a uh, it is kind of hard to do uh, chess AI in general. I have no idea if this game does it well or if it does it poorly, so. Like I said, I'd rather just play it on an actual chess board. Yeah, so you, you're way more into chess than I am. I bought this as a, a drunken bit CIB on eBay one night. Yeah, I remember you telling after me. After watching fucking Vicariously Retro's video, which, thanks, bro. Don't think he's going to watch this, but thanks. My only CIB NES game. I had to give my man a call out. <laughs> the chess know, master. He didn't ask for a call out. <sighs> anyway. It, it's his fault that we're doing this segment. So, what are, you, what are you thinking, Nathan, for the chess master? I don't know enough to give this a proper ranking, so I'm going off vibes purely if you want a drink ask for a fucking drink well i didn't think we had to put it on the microphone but yeah but you. then you wanted to reach on it's fun i didn't touch anything where where i'm gonna put the chess master for me 
it's it's not gonna be my bottom. It was close to my bottom. But then I remember the game is in my bottom. I was like, eh, okay. <laughs> it, goes, it goes a little higher than that. Because, like, man, if I had, like, no internet <laughs> and just by myself, I could play this game. Which, which, it, it, it's not a bad game. It's no. just not a game for me to take seriously. Yeah. Like, it, it's a joke game for me, but I could see how someone would really enjoy playing this but if so, they didn't have someone to play chess with and yeah. they really enjoyed it. But there's so many better ways to play chess than this. I mean... But also, in some ways, you have to take into account when it would have come out in the 80s, where it's like, you didn't have internet. You didn't... You may not have had a community to play with, right? So, I find it to be an acceptable alternative. For me, I just don't care. But I would rather play this than God of War. You'd rather play this than God of War. I would not rather play this than Black. So this is going to be man. Our last few couple rankings have been right in sync. This was also my third from the bottom. Uh... Yeah. So for me, that makes see. I'm updating Google Docs in real time so I can tell you what my new numbers are as we go. Justin, I'm writing them down and having to do weird math later. But uh, this puts it as my new number seventeen. Yeah. God of War is just, like, it's not a bad game, but there are just so many better... I'm shocked that God of War is hung at the bottom of my list as long as it has. I'm, like, I, I'm shocked it's still my number one. Uh, yeah, that's wild. Yeah. But, uh, hey, Curveball Over, I don't know if that's going to play well on the mic. Curveball or... Over. Man, you've really been on that pitcher's mound a lot of times, haven't you? <laughs> After you throw your ball, you just go, Curveball Over, I'm preparing the next one, partner. Yeah, okay, cool. You just reminded me <laughs> of an Earthworm Jim bit with Professor Monkey for a head pretending to be a cowboy. Where he's like, <laughs> he showed me that. He's bit. like, "Hello there, partner." <laughs> Dude, I love Earthworm Jim cartoon. God damn it! But we're not here to talk about Earthworm Jim. We're here to talk about Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom. Talk to me about it. How do you feel about it? I feel really good about it. I feel like this is a game that you and I are going to play a lot more of. Uh, when... Mostly because I say so. I love this game. Sure. I, th th there's definitely some more practice needed on my part to try to even get anywhere close to a level where I start eking out some wins against you, right? So... But you have done. I have. I, it's one of those things where... I don't know that you beat me on camera this past episode, but you've beaten me before. I got you close on this yeah. last episode. I did notice that uh, when we were both all random, I got you down to your final character at half health, and then you were, you bullied me with Frank West. You threw a pie in my face. Anyway... I... Some guy's drag racing outside. I'm not even sure if that'll pick up a mic or not. No, it did, but I think the noise gate will knock it out. But, I forgot I used Frank West, because we did start doing random bullshit at the we end. We did, yes. Because we ended the two-hour stream with that. We did. Yeah, that was our that was our uh, final farewell. Yeah. Which is why there's like five minutes at the end of it of us drunk and rambling about Just things. Just rambling. Yeah, uh, promises that we won't keep and uh, obligations we won't meet. But, that's not here nor there. Uh, when it comes to uh, Marvel's Capcom 3, though, I, I, I have my preferences when it comes to play styles, which is definitely, you know, um, one mover, slower style, bigger HP bars, which is something that Marvel's Capcom 3 does not give you at all for anything. Like, it is very fast. It wants you to be focusing on your combos and your assists to elongate your combos. Yeah. And uh, it does not give you the kind of advantage with health that, like, for example, Marvel's Capcom 2 did. I feel like... There, so, there, are, there definitely are way more tanky characters in two. Yeah, I having said all that, I think this is a game we're gonna play a lot more of, and I'm actually excited to play more of it. Uh, I was actually even talking to you off camera or off microphone to be more accurate. We're talking off camera right now. We're always off camera, baby. Unless we're on our OnlyFans, then we're always on camera. You just gotta set the precedent now, in case we ever do make an OnlyFans. But having said that, uh, I was talking about getting <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate Marvel's Capcom Three on my uh, on my PS Five just to like to play it at home and like get better feel for it. Pretty yeah. much. Also, I do have it on good advice that a professional trainer is ready to prepare me to fight against you. Oh, Sir Ken Gordon. Yes, Ken Kenny Star. That's not his name at all. <laughs> good old Kenny Loggins uh, is going to train you in Marvel's Capcom Three just to defeat you. He still wants to defeat me. He's very competitive. We'll, we'll discuss uh, streams and ideas that we'll never follow through on at the end, like we normally do. That makes sense. Uh, as far as the game, uh, graphics, fine. It's a, it's a 360 game, uh, PS3 game. 
They really didn't do much in the update to Ultimate. It still looks the fucking same. It looks like it's from 2012. I kind of wish they had done more of the stylization, because certain characters in that game, I think, look fucking fantastic. Yes. Um, And it's because they kept kind of like the art style from where they were depicted from. And they kind of do it for some characters. They do it really well on very few characters. Well, what they did in 3 is they leaned more into the comic book aesthetic. So yeah. there's a lot more like harsh black lines in the outline yeah. of characters. Where in uh, 2, it's more pixel art. No, that is very true. Uh, I, I, I can't remember the guy's name. Is it Shadowheart? I remember him looking as a very yes. very interesting character. From like, 2. Like, yeah, they kept his... Um, well, I think he's in 3, too. He's not. He? Man, who's the Shadow guy in 3? Doesn't matter. That's <laughs> not the point. Anyway, but uh, but yeah, no, I mean, the, the graphics are fine. They're serviceable. Uh, I have little, little uh, critiques, but nothing too serious. Yeah. Uh, how'd you feel like it controlled? Because they, they added more speed to the game. I had noticed. Yeah, it, it's way faster. Yeah, no, I, I definitely need to um, get more practice with it. It did feel responsive, though. Uh, I think the biggest thing I, I, I had to complain about is I need to figure out where attacks land in general. I need to figure out how to interrupt better or to work on my blocking better. Because there's so many times where I'm like, man, like, where the fuck should I be blocking to stop this fucking chain of attacks coming? Yeah, and, and, and uh, three, the, my issue with a lot of fighting games is they don't do a great job of teaching you, uh, I'll call it theory. Yeah. Uh, it'll be like, oh, hey, here's how to do this combo. Here's how to do this combo. Here's how to move. Here's how to dodge. What they don't do is teaching you why you would want to do that and when you would want to do that. Because why would they? It's like, oh, you could hop on YouTube and watch this guy teach you how to do it. It's like, no, I want you to teach me how to do it. I shouldn't have to go to external sources to figure out how to play your game. But, uh... I guess... Like, I'm sitting here looking at my list. I'm, I'm more uh, thinking in real time. Because I had an idea of where I wanted to put this. But I'm, I'm curious now, having talked about it and having thought about it for uh, a little while. Where are, you, where are you putting yours? And I guess that'll uh, lead into me, I guess. This is coming in just above Marvel's Capcom 2 for me. You're putting it above 2? Yes. This is going to be number 4. I am shocked. I really thought you would have put it below, because you had way more fun, or seemingly had more fun, with 2. So, once again, we kind of fall into the, the same trap of I... What number is this for you? It's going to be my new number 4. Okay. But uh, we fall in the same trap again where it's like, I'm definitely, I think I'm better at two. I, I, I found something that worked in two rather quickly, and I'm happy about that. Having said that, though, there is um, a more, there's a wider scene available for three. You know, three is the newest version of the game, even though it did come out back on the Xbox 360. It is not the newest version. Is it not? Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite came out. I did forget about Infinite. Well. I want to go too in in depth into Infinite, but Infinite was not very well received yeah. compared to three. Yeah, but... no, I, I was actually working at GameStop when that came out. I totally spaced on that. Wow. Yep. Anyway, to make a, a short story rather long, as we tend to do, uh, you know, I, you really enjoy this game, and I have other friends that enjoy this game as well. Ken being one of them, obviously. Yeah. So this is a game that I feel like you know, if I do spend some more time with, and I do get better it's going to justify its position on my list a little more, but I'm still looking forward to playing it. You know, like I said, I, I was considering buying it for my PS5, so I can actually just... It goes on sale constantly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, so it's going to come just above just because I think I get more people to play this game with me than I could for two. Literally, that's the, that's the main reason why it just edges it out. And that that's funny to me. So, my ranking... It's gonna. It's obviously going above Marvel vs. Capcom two for me, which Marvel vs. Capcom two is my number three. Yeah. What I was trying to figure out is, it's not going above Battletoads. It it's not. I I enjoy Battletoads a lot more than I do Marvel vs. Capcom three. The question was, and what was kind of racking my brain a little bit, Bushido Blade. Mm. Does it go above or below Bushido Blade? And I, I think it goes below. I think Bushido Blade has a charm and accessibility to it. You could literally put anybody down who understands how to hit a button with Bushido Blade and can hold their own and have a decent time with it and understand it. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is the definition of inaccessible. 
The closest thing it has to accessibility for a new player is that it's a four button fighter instead of a six. So there's less like, what button do I, it's no, you've got light, medium, heavy, special. You don't have three buttons for a punch and three buttons for a kick like you do Street Fighter. Yeah. That being said, I think this is a better game than two. So th- this is my new uh, number three. Which is funny because I think it's my new number four. Once again... We're, we're both above the same game. Yeah. It's just slightly different on the list. I, I'm still blown away. I would not have guessed that you would have put three over two. Uh, that that was uh, something that I decided to do before we start, even started recording. I knew it was going to happen. And like I said, it, it just edges it out based off of the, the group of friends I have, literally. You know, the community that we have. Where... If, for example, if it was just you that was in the Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and like none of our other friends even were interested in playing it... You and I would never touch it. Yeah, it, 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 it'd go much, much lower. It'd or, be one of those things where like, I bullied you into being like, hey, you're doing me a favor by playing this instead of wanting to play it yourself. But no, I, I am excited about uh, potentially learning a fighting game. I think it, it's one of those things where I have been wondering a long time, you know, if I should sit down with a fighting game, if I should just learn a fighting game, because I own a couple... Uh, I got a couple free through PlayStation and a couple that you know I've bought over the years, and none of them have really clicked, and none of them have really made me want to be like, okay, let me practice. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I might end up doing that for uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Three, which means that if it does, it's going to go into the pool of like two or three games that I play at any given time. So that means I'm going to be devoting a lot of time to it. Yeah, and like like Marvel vs. Capcom Three, I know as much as I'm going to know without like, sitting down and being like, I need to be the best in the world and, like, learn my team and all that Man, bullshit. you gotta get competitive, bro. Start winning some tourneys. You're good to go, baby. Yeah, I, I don't I don't want to get back into that mindset again. But uh, Killer Instinct... You need someone to pay for your Las Vegas flights. I got you, homie. Okay, we'll get you out there. Do they even still do tournaments for fucking three? I haven't followed Evo in a while. That's uh, fair. You, you, you'd have to check that out. We're doing the rambling thing again. Yeah, uh, uh, we're pretty used to that at this point. I would hope, at least. Yeah, so uh, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, the next game that we are playing... Oh, shit. Well, th- for updates for whoever makes it this far on day one of a video. Uh, our special bonus D&D Warriors of the Eternal Sun two-parter. You kept that? You swore to me you'd burn it! Yeah, a uh, friend of the channel, Christian, uh, will be hosting that one. And those are going up... Friday at 9 p.m. and Saturday at 10 p.m. Those are already upda- uploaded, scheduled. They're they're coming out. Uh, as far as this episode, I love how we're giving updates on an episode that will come out after the episodes that we're telling people I to was, watch. I was a little curious. I didn't think about that. We're leaving this in. Okay, I was a little curious about what you're. So really let me ch- about. let me change the tone a little bit. Okay. You, you I hope you enjoy yeah. <laughs> the Horse of the Eternal Sun episode. It's weird recording something before something's going out, knowing that this will come out after the thing that I've already recorded. You're so articulate, Nathan. I mean, my God, you paint, you've painted a picture for me, Leonardo. Uh, um, I, I'm like a Picasso with my word paintings. Gross. <laughs> what, a, no, uh, what a disgusting statement you just made. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh... I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. When you said curveball, I really thought you were gonna add, throw the D and D game at me. That's what I thought was coming. No, no, we haven't played nearly enough. Which is why I was like, I was like, oh shit, I don't have an opinion on that yet. And then you're like, chess master. I'm like, this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, bullshit aside, me uh, not looking at a calendar to understand how dates work. Uh, the next thing that will be going up will be Mario World, because we're gonna end this recording and start playing Mario World. Oh, yes. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, we're going to end the recording now and go do that. So, uh, bye.